Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So today I'm continuing on with some more Atari 7800 games. And this one is the impossible, impossible mission. Um, and I call it impossible, impossible mission because for whatever reason, you cannot complete this game. Uh, it's quite fitting for its name, of course, but it was unintentional. And I know I've talked about this one a few times before. If you've probably watched all my videos, you've probably heard me say this a few times. This one actually was released with a bug in it that you cannot complete it. It's kind of a shame because I really love this game. And not this one, but the Commodore 64 version. That is the one I grew up with. And again, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you'll know that... The Commodore 64 was the one machine that I grew up and played probably the most games on. Uh, I had an Intellivision. I started with the Intellivision. I played a lot of Intellivision games. But when we as a family got the Commodore 64 and games like literally started flooding in because that's just the way it worked back then. If you knew somebody that had a Commodore 64, you would trade games. You would essentially save games onto discs. You would get your friends to save games and, and people you knew. And they would save games. That's just the way it was. And you would end up with an entire disc li li library of games. Um, and, you know, that, that was just normal. And one of the games that pretty much everybody had during those days was Impossible Mission. And I loved that game. I played the heck out of Impossible Mission. In fact, you know, I got to a point where every time I played it, I always completed it. And I still can complete it today. I'm still, you know, it's still in my brain. It's still rattling around in there. I've done a few videos on it. I've done, like, some live play stuff on it. And, you know, I've talked about it. But this one, I've, I've kind of only briefed about it. But I haven't actually done a video on it. And I've been trying to think, what's the best way to do it? Do I want to just do what I normally do? Plug it into my 7800 and just point the, the camera at the screen? But I thought, no, I want to do an actual comparison. I want to actually look at this game and see how it is different from the Commodore 64 version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually emulate it. Um, I have the original. Obviously, I could plug it in. But I think I think I just want to, would rather do an emulation just so you can see it exactly how it should look. Um, you know, sound effects and all that other stuff. So let's put this in. And I'm going to run through a part of the game just to show you all the different things and kind of talk about the differences between this version and the Commodore 64 version that I was more familiar with. Okay, so we have Impossible Mission now. Um, yeah, this actually looks pretty decent. Comparing, you know, I have to compare this to obviously the Commodore 64 version because that's the one I grew up with. And I love the Commodore 64 version. I still play it a lot. I always will. And, you know, it was just cool to see it on the Atari system actually like this. Now, the guy there, he kind of looks like the one in the Commodore 64. I'm not going to, like, say that, you know, that the, the, the 70 or the, yeah, the Atari 7800 should have the exact same graphics. I kind of like that it had, looks kind of different. Um, you know, Obviously, there's going to be some some dari some variances. Um, there's no talking in this one. In the Commodore 64 right now, when the game boots up, you would actually hear another visitor, stay a while, stay forever. This one, you're not going to get that. So, it's okay. So, let's get this going. And, um, okay, there we are. Okay, so it does make the sound effects when, when he runs, which is also in, in the Commodore 64 version. Uh, oops. And and the jumping, you know, it's pretty much the same. Now the only thing I don't know if it's any different is if it actually mixes up the the rooms or if it's always gonna be the same room patterns. Because that was one thing that about the uh whoops, just died. That was one thing about the Commodore 64 version was you weren't always gonna play with the same rooms in the same pattern. It mixed, it mixed the game up pretty well, so you never knew what you were going to play. And in each room, the robots would be configured differently. So maybe in this version, I don't know, maybe the robots are, are configured differently, but the rooms are always going to be the same order? 
you know, that still gives it some element of, you know, you don't know what you're getting into on each game. Ah, I just died again. The, the death scene is actually pretty decent. Um, I think in the, uh, the, the 64, the Commodore version, uh, you actually see him kind of, like, fall apart. This one, he kind of just glows a bit. Well, you don't really see him fall apart. You see him kind of, like, dissipate, which is nice. And it has, like, you know, better sound effects, like, like he's actually, like, dissipating. This one, it's, you know, it's using the Atari sound chip, which is it's not bad. I mean, it's just not the greatest. As you can see, I'm not doing too well. Now, when I played this actually on my Atari 7800, after I first got the game, I actually used the original, um, the joystick that came with the 7800. Oh, that was bad. And I did that on purpose. I just wanted to play it as it, it was really, you know, meant to be played. Um, in Europe, obviously, they would have had a gamepad. Now, I'm actually using my Nintendo gamepad. Well, this isn't actually Nintendo. This is Retro Link. Uh, but, you know, it, it mimics the gamepad from the Nintendo pretty well. And uh, it seems to do the job, so... You know, if I was playing this actually on my Atari 7800 right now, I would probably want to actually connect my uh, Atari 2600 joystick. Because that's the way I would have played my um, Impossible Mission on the Commodore 64 as well. And I just got fried. Now, uh, what I was kind of talking about in the intro of this video was... Um, this is the computer that I think what happens is it hides pieces behind this thing. Now this thing is supposed to be for lifts, which are those little things you saw me go up and down on, and the robots, you can put them to sleep. And that's it. That's all those computers are for. You can't search them for pieces. But I think what happened was there was a, a bug in the code, and you cannot, um, you know, search... Uh, well, maybe it'll put like a puzzle piece like what you would find here into that computer which you cannot search so as you can see I just got a uh, a lift piece those are kind of important because sometimes the lift pieces you know you play on the on the screen and you might fall and the lifts are all up somewhere else where you can't get to them and and by lifts I mean the thing I'm on right now and you need to reset them and so they're actually pretty important the snooze is also important, because some levels are just literally impossible. Uh, the robots are in a, a position where you cannot pass them. It could be a, like a certain kind of robot that's constantly shooting. You know, obviously the best robots are these guys here, that just sit there and stare at you. I can just literally go in and search all this stuff. But that's all I'm doing, I'm just searching stuff in the rooms. That was a snooze. See, now I can actually, if I wanted to, put all the robots to sleep, or I can go and reset their lifts. But ultimately what you're doing is you're searching all this stuff to, uh, all these rooms to look for puzzle pieces. <laughs> and you need to get all the puzzle pieces and assemble them together and get a code out of it. Oh, man. My jumping timing is off on this one. And each of the robots have their own little personalities. Some just do like this guy, he just goes back and forth. Not menacing at all. Run! I mean, this is actually pretty decent considering, you know, like... Being a cartridge game on the Atari 7800 is actually pretty decent. Um, there's no sound effects. Uh, well, the speech effects, I should say. Uh, like I said at the beginning, normally there would be that, um, you know, Elvin, Adam Badender, or whatever his name is, uh, would appear. Uh, this is an interesting level here. Or, well, it's not a level. It's, it's just a room. But with this, you can actually um, gain... 
uh, lifts or snoozes. But you have to do the, the tone in lowest to highest. So you listen to what it does. It's kind of like Simon, those Simon games. You have to listen to the tone and then try and get the, the lowest tone to the highest tone. There we go. And of course it gets harder and harder. But the more you complete, the more stuff you get. I guess it all depends on how, how well you are with your, uh, your ear. If you're tone deaf, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, this is getting harder now. Ah! Alright, I go up. <laughs> I'm not the greatest when it comes to that stuff. But I did get myself some good stuff during that. Now on this stage, it's actually kind of reminiscent of the, uh, the Commodores as well. I mean, you have the, uh... I can go in here. So, if I had any puzzle pieces, which I somehow don't, I've gotten this far, I'd be able to go up and down. You got a telephone piece here, which actually allows you to correct the pieces, because not only do you get a piece, but the piece is actually kind of mixed around. Um, you know, it's kind of rotated and in the wrong color and all that stuff, so you actually have to correct it. And that you do over here, you got these colors, red, yellow, green, which I think are different on the Commodore. Uh, then you got all these, like, you know, different things like your pause button, your trash button, and all the other stuff. I'm gonna go to the off. You have to imagine he has, like, a little kind of pad in his hand that's giving us all this information. And another thing, you know, sometimes in, in the Commodore 64 version, um, you will hear, uh, uh, Elvin, his name is Elvin, the bad guy, You'll hear him say things like destroy him or, uh, you know, there's a few things I think he says. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty decent. This is actually, you know, better than what I expected when I first got this game. Like, I knew it would be similar to the Commodore 64 version. And that's all you're doing. You're going from room to room. Ah! Now that's different too. So, in the Commodore 64 version, when he falls down a hole, he screams. And he goes, ah! In this one, it makes just a normal, eh, kind of a weird sound. I guess there's only one room on this stage. So we're just going to keep on passing by. And he can't go up. So you gotta look in your little maze down there to see where you are. And, uh, like, a thing about this game is, if you can't, for whatever, pass a level, oops, then you have to remember. You have to come back to it. Maybe you need a snooze to put the, uh, robot to sleep or something. You know, like, look at this guy. He's kind of going back and forth. And when he sees me, he charges towards me. Which is good or bad, depending on where your space is. So let's put him to sleep. Which will also put that ball to sleep, too. Temporary disable robots in this room. Yes, please. Accept it. Log off. So now he's asleep. Nothing will hurt you. You just gotta be quick. Because you don't want to, you know, take your... You don't want to take forever to get down there or where you have to go. Because they'll wake up. And it's as easy as that. If you can put them to sleep and get through the board long, then we'll fasten them. I have to admit, though, the robots in this version look a little bit different as well. 
They look a little bit almost like police robots in this one. Oh no. Of course, every time I uh, get hit, um, that takes a little chunk off my time. Not doing too good here. I'm gonna jump over. And of course, if you run out of time, the bomb explodes and Elvin wins. The hit detection in this one is a little bit hard. Ah, oh, right in the butt! But yeah, I'm gonna search. And so you pretty much just go through the whole game. If you want to see how the whole game looks like, uh, you know, well, not this one, but I did a, uh, a Commodore 64 playthrough where I completed the game. If you want to see the whole thing in, in its impossible glory. Let's just go out and check out how it looks like with the uh, pieces. So there's our pieces. And these are the pieces that, um, you know, they don't exist in, you know, it's an entirety on this version, unfortunately. And so you can, like, take a piece out, you can take another piece out, you can change its color, see if they will fit together, it won't, you can uh, call the phone number, and you have correct orientations in the upper left pieces, or have we have enough pieces to solve the left puzzle, it'll tell you. Every time you use this option, you lose more of your time. So you don't want to be too, you know, using them too often. Usually when I play this game, it, I go through the whole game, collect all the single pieces, and then I go and I correct them all, and then I go and try and solve, the, solve them myself by dragging them out, filtering through, taking it out there, looking at it, thinking, well, you know, maybe this will fit there, you know, like that. And uh, that's how I do it. I usually go through the whole thing, make sure they're all correct, and then I just put it all together. Unfortunately, with this version, you can't do it because you're going to end up with a lot of pieces that you can't get, and it's all over at that point. So, as you can see, I mean, it's actually pretty decent. It's actually, you know, it's got that Atari 2600, 7800 kind of feel. You know, the blocky graphics, uh, you know, you're playing on a joystick with one button. It's got all that feel to it, the old nostalgic feel to it. Uh, whereas, like, the Commodore 64 version was a little more advanced. Now, I know this game did appear on a bunch of other systems, uh, you know, a lot of other computers and all that other stuff. But it was just great to see that this appeared in cartridge format. In fact, I even remember when I was a kid, you know, knowing that it appeared on a cartridge, and I didn't know which system it was. I, I for some reason, thought it was the Atari 2600, and I always wondered how the heck did it pull that off. But then I, I came to learn it was actually the 7800. Now, as far as being impossible, like I kind of briefed in, in when I was playing, the pieces get scattered into areas that you cannot look for, um, which obviously causes a problem. And I actually, you know, I want to find out for myself when I first got this, and I actually did sit down and run through every single level and grabbed every single item and solved all the pieces, and I was still, I think, one or two you know, or three pieces short, and I could not complete the game, so obviously it must be true. Um, and I did look into this, and there is a corrected version that somebody did where they actually went into the code, they fixed it, they completed it, uh, and I'm talking NTSC here, keep that in mind. I know there's a PAL version, which is, you know, overseas, and I believe that one was actually fixed and worked. So if you're in the PAL region, probably your, your impossible mission works. But I'm talking about NTSC, which is like North America here. So somebody actually went in and fixed the code and created a, a version called Possible Mission, which is more like a uh, like a hack or a, brew, a little homebrew or something like that. Well, more of a hack. And you can actually buy that um, off the person and, and stuff like that. And they, they created a label for it and it's a cartridge and it fully functions. Which is neat, you know, if you really want to play the game, you want to play it properly, you got to go with that version. 
But uh, otherwise, I mean, it's still fun. It's still Impossible Mission. You're still playing it. Yeah, you can't complete it. But it's still, you know, you get the excitement. You get to go through all the levels. You get to, you know, you can get as far as you can get. And that's about it. Anyways, yeah. I'd like to know what you have to think of uh, Impossible Mission. Have you played any Impossible Missions on any systems? I'd love to hear it. If you played it on the Commodore, if you played it on the uh, Satic Spectrum, or whatever other, whatever other systems out there, computer systems out there that, that contain this game, I'd like to hear your version. There's also a Nintendo Wii version, which I am yet to show off, and I hope to do so at some point, because it is actually pretty cool too. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Leave some comments down below what you think. If you had it, what your opinion is on it, have you completed it on the PAL version or any of the possible version, let me know. Anyways, hope you liked the video, hope you subscribe to my channel, talk to you later.